uh, advantage in writing the book, you know, which is called uh, APM Best Practices, Realizing Application Performance Management, was to be able to take processes that we've been using for quite a few years already under a proprietary service offering and make these available to, to the general public. Um, what was really uh, important for us is to keep growing the APM uh, marketplace, we have to do a much better job in getting customers started and successful with the monitoring tools. So at, uh, at this point in time, it's back in 2009, Chris Cook was uh, the head of the, uh, the APM uh, product, and he basically commissioned the book. Uh, he'd already known about it since this was a, a proprietary service offering under Wiley, and uh, we'd done quite, uh, you know, some quite interesting business with it. And uh, he said, you know, if we're going to grow the market, we've got to get these ideas out there. We've got to get people talking about APM in the same language. So that's really the motivation for the book and, uh, and also for, you know, kind of the scope that uh, we undertook with it. The audience we were going after was really quite broad, and that presented a little bit of a problem uh, because we wanted to touch anyone who was involved in the application lifecycle. Uh, traditionally, we're only going after the folks in IT operations, you know, when it comes to monitoring tools. But when we're looking at performance management, we really have to look at the developers, the QA testers, the application owners, even the business users of the application are people that are going to be interested in consuming the, uh, the performance information uh, that we're generating. So this necessitated kind of breaking the book into three areas, uh, one focused on folks that were doing the planning, another one focused on folks who are doing the implementation, and then a, a, a section that focused on what the practitioners of the technology would be doing. And these are actually three very different concerns and roles, but they're all part of a successful practice uh, based on APM. The real scope of the, the project pretty much was uh, consistent throughout the writing phase. The, the, the difficulty that arose, though, was that uh, I had quite a bit more material um, I had written a lot of white papers, uh, and that's what a lot of the chapters were based on. But basically, uh, in conjunction and working with the editors, you know, we basically arrived at a point where they said, you know, we, we've got enough for one book, let's save something for another one. Um, so really, we stayed on track. We ended up really cutting uh, almost six chapters from what we wanted to cover, you know, things like dashboards and, and uh, you know, overhead testing, you know, uh, very specific techniques. Um, one other goal for the book was to keep it very vendor neutral uh, so that any type of APM tool could take advantage of the process techniques that we were talking about. Um, and then what we ended up doing over the last couple years is building a lot of cookbooks which were very specific to the CA uh, uh, tool set and, and those processes and screenshots and stuff like that. Uh, those were more appropriate for an internal consumption and putting that kind of stuff into the book was really going to be problematic. So we stayed on scope, but we actually had to trim quite a bit to make it fit into something that was reasonable for a first offering in, in you know, uh, understanding application performance management. Well, the basics are really about establishing a vocabulary for talking about APM. Uh, we break most of the techniques down into skills, process, and competency. And these are the things that we use to really help people understand what their roles and responsibilities are going to be in maintaining and, uh, and you know, growing an APM initiative. Um, a lot of our customers start with one or two or three applications, yet our biggest customers are really looking at hundreds and thousands of applications. Um, going from the very small to the very large without a good process infrastructure is, is what uh, is a challenge for a lot of customers. So removing that impediment means that they're more able to consume the licenses that they bought and also that they can take advantage of the information by you know, really understanding the, the, you know, the different stakeholders that are participating and, uh, and helping communicate what performance is, is meaning for, for their business as well as the, uh, the operation of the, uh, you know, the different services that are available. Well, the big message is that it can be done. Uh, what I was very much focused on with the book was only to write about things that I was actually doing over the prior years uh, to help customers be successful. So these aren't theoreticals, these aren't, hey, I think this would be a good idea, try it and let me know. These are exactly what I did. Um, 
one restriction we had, though, we couldn't specifically mention customer references. You know, again, just a, a kind of a, a legal requirement. So, uh, but really, everything that came out of it was based on customer artifacts. So we could scrub those a little bit, and we could basically take what was common out of the different service deliveries that we did, and then, you know, from that, extract out the processes, and then be able to document those processes quite, uh, quite accurately. Uh, but the major message and, and what folks uh, have come back to me was that the book gives them the confidence to go ahead with an APM initiative. Uh, they kind of pick and choose a la carte, uh, you know, whether they expressly implement the processes that I've described, whether they use the same names, but the concepts absolutely have been, uh, you know, re-implemented and reinterpreted quite a few times. And it's just knowing that it can be done gives people a lot of confidence that they can go forward and be successful on their own initiative. Write a book that's vendor neutral and technology neutral. We're really going to the sweet spot of what we think the industry is going to be doing for the next 10 or 15 years. Um, by identifying, you know, for APM, there's a technology stack which spans everything from logging all the way through to bytecode instrumentation, to tra transaction uh, capture. Um, you know, these are all the technologies that have been available over the last 15 years, and we really expect to be available for another 15 years. But by focusing on the processes and rather than the specific implementation of a given tool, we are able to get to a more common ground and ensure that those processes are going to be universally applicable no matter which technology variant you're using or you know, even which vendor you might be working with um, so that we get something that's really going to be meaningful for, for the enterprise to undertake. You know, we, we don't want to ask someone to build a process around a tool that's only going to be viable for a couple years. We want to have folks build a process that they can rely on for the next 10 to 15 years up until the point that, you know, maybe technology gets so advanced that we simply don't need people to, to configure and operate and interpret the information. Um, that's a nice dream, but today we need to be able to do stuff right now, and these te techniques are really focused on what you can do right now or in the next couple of weeks to make your use of APM information beneficial for your enterprise. The basic technique of establishing a best practice around a given technology is relatively generic. Um, you know, I go in and I assess organizations and, you know, when I want to see how successful they are with a tool or how successful a vendor is in, in delivering a tool, you know, the first thing I look for is a health check. How do you know that the tool was installed correctly? How do you know it's operating right? How do you know it's within its scalability on a given platform? How do you know when that platform's run out of steam and, and you need to, to upgrade or reconfigure or re-architect? Uh, so those are the very basics about a software package uh, that, that folks need to understand. And then when you add to that a little bit of process around doing a health check, then you quickly get into you know, things like an audit uh, around a specific application. Uh, and, and the processes really fall out quite meaningfully uh, you know, from those kinds of uh, uh, you know, thought experiments. Um, but the bottom line is that having a best practice means that you're in a solution selling model. You're not just selling a tool. Anybody can sell you a hammer. Who's going to show you how to build a shed, to build a house, to build a condominium complex? These are the things that having process and having more of a solutions uh, uh, focus are going to help you achieve, which means you're going to have a much better relationship with your customer. Uh, over the last couple of years, I've also tried to you know, get other products at CA focused on the idea of building up a set of best practices on how they're used. And this still remains a pretty big challenge. You know, CA has a lot of products, but if you go out and you focus, and, and maybe it's for your book coming up, you know, something on SiteBinder, something on the mainframe, something on security products, it's really easy to go through and decide where you know things and where you don't, and then look for those service opportunities or escalations or whatever it is, even a pilot project, to go out and document exactly what you did to make that customer successful. And then you bring all those things together and you tell a story about, you know, how do you start with a security tool? What are the things you run into? What are the objections that people are going to come across with? And then how do you counter and move those things along? Uh, so there's really an opportunity for a lot more books to come out of CA, specifically around best practices, not necessarily for APM, but for all the other products that we have. 
and that puts us in a much better uh, competitive advantage in the marketplace because we're selling solutions and everybody else is selling product and the customer is always going to go with that stronger solution sell. You know, uh, having a product and having to figure it out on your own is very, very expensive. You know, having a partner that will lead you through that, uh, that process, help you establish a practice around the tool, that's the partner that you're really going to do business with. Thank you.